Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of O365A. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, live events, and I'm going to ask Curtis to uh, lead us off. Yeah, thanks, Habib. So, uh, yeah, live events. It's a it's a large scale video broadcast and meeting content uh, distribution application. It's the next iteration of uh, Skype for Business broadcast. So it's uh, it's meant for the uh, the one to many type scenarios, like your, your town halls, your your webinars. And um, in terms of scale, they, uh, they, I think the, the way they describe it is it, it was designed for up to 10,000 attendees. That's a soft limit. You can go over it if, uh, if you need be, but um, up to 10,000, that's sort of the uh, upper limit of what you can expect to, for it to scale to. And, um, you know, unlike Skype for Business broadcast, one of the big benefits is it's, uh, there's no separate client. It's integrated with Teams. So you can both schedule a live event through Teams and you can attend through Teams. And what's really good from an attendee perspective is uh, you can attend through the desktop, the Teams client, or the Teams uh, web uh, client, which is through a browser, or the, uh, the Teams mobile client. So you have a couple different options there. And um, uh, live events uses um, the Azure media services and content delivery network um, underneath the covers. So it relies on Microsoft Stream, which uses these Azure services, and it, it streams the content in a very scalable way. And then you can also uh, record um, through Microsoft Stream and, and distribute the recording later. Um, there's both like a, a producer role, uh, which you can set um, all, all the knobs and, and whistles on how you want to produce the event. And through this, the scheduling in Microsoft Teams, you can set things like um, uh, who's who's allowed to be an attendee, the, what attendees can do. Um, you can designate who the event team members are. So all that's done, again, through the Teams client. Um, so yeah, this is a, a really great uh, great um, service for that, that once again, that, that large um, one-to-many broadcast scenario. So, uh, Dino, do you want to talk about um, the, the content delivery network? Yeah, for sure. So whenever you're doing any kind of large broadcasts, obviously uh, your network's going to be a uh, consideration. So, um, you know, you're, if you think of it, if you're having a, a broadcast meeting of 5,000 people, then uh, obviously that all those people, because they're, you're dealing with a service in the cloud, are going to be pulling down content coming from the Azure cloud. So that's um, going to be a pretty big toll on your network. So uh, this notion of enterprise content delivery uh, or CDN or, e or ECDN, as you might hear it, um, has come out. And um, there's a bunch of vendors that uh, are, make this possible for you. So think about CDN as uh, file sharing tools, like in the old, you know, back in the day, like Napster and other popular file sharing tools are basically they're optimizing the streams that you're pulling down from the cloud so that you're not having 5,000 people literally download downloading the same stream. So you'll want to look into the um, the vendors that um, um, that are supporting this. And there's a few out there like Hive and Collective uh, and Blast, um, or just to name a couple. Um, and they're they're going to be the ones that you're going to want to reach out to to talk to about um, getting down going down the path of using live events um, to get that optimization on your network. So um, in some cases, just to give you a number, you can optimize the the, the connections that you're utilizing up to seventy five percent. So rather than having you know all five thousand people uh, connecting to the internet, you're going to have a much you know smaller fraction of that number. Um, so saving saving your utilization on the network, which is important. Um, you're going to get a lot of cool things with this, like network analytics. So you know you'll have your meeting, and then you post meeting, you can analyze like how much savings you had on the network, where your choke points were, um, you know where you might need to make some further optimizations, and so um, uh, that's that's very very key when when working with uh, with live events. So how this works is you'll have, uh, uh, there's basically going to be a small app that's installed on all the machines on your network. And then they'll, that's how the, the collective of different machines will talk to each other and, and self-optimize in terms of where to get your stream. So 
you know, if, if you're in a subnet that's got 50 users or a small branch office, one or two or three of those uh, PCs will be downloading the actual stream and then distributing it. The other machines will connect to one of those local machines. So you're not tying, again, not everyone's going out to the internet. Um, you know, so again, if you're gonna leverage live events to any kind of scale, or even if you're a smaller company that has uh, limited internet ca capabilities, you're gonna wanna look into one of these uh, CDN providers. Um, the process will be uh, definitely start with doing a small POC with one of the vendors or more of the, or, or multiple vendors to see who you, who you like. Uh, budget about one to two weeks um, to deal with each vendor and to go through the process of uh, uh, doing the due diligence. And, and the process is kind of neat because they'll actually simulate um, a live event without actually doing a live event. So the process of deploying the agents to the machines on your network, well, they can uh, take remote control and, and simulate, let's say we're gonna do a 250 person event or a all the way up to a 5,000 or even a 10,000 user event. You can move in stages to see what, what the impact on your network is and then do the post-mortem on the, on, uh, in terms of the, the metrics. So strongly encourage you to go through that, uh, to that process. Uh, with with you know one or more of the vendors to see uh, you know how your network's going to perform, and so with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Hab, and he's going to talk about uh, licensing. Yeah, so I mean, what is uh, you know once you want to create a live event, you know what's what is required uh, from a license perspective and a tenant perspective. So obviously, uh, you need an Office 365 license. Uh, they are enterprise licenses, so E1, E3, E5. Um, in addition, the user who is going to be creating a live event must also have a Teams, a Skype for Business, Skype for Business, and a Microsoft Stream license assigned to them um, to the user account. Um, <clears throat> so it's important to know that it's only used for uh, creating live events. So you only need a license for that particular purpose. Uh, if you are consuming the live event, you don't need a um, a license assigned to you. Um, so as Curtis mentioned, uh, the the live events is uh, the way you set it up is you, you utilizes Microsoft Teams. Uh, however, you can use, uh, which is a new feature as a, from Skype broadcast, is you can use uh, external encoder uh, productions, which Michael will talk about a little bit later. Um, from but that user must have a, uh, a Microsoft Stream license for the encoder side of things. Um, from a user perspective, they need to be assigned a, a different Teams meeting policy and a meeting broadcast policy. Uh, and then in addition, uh, they need to be able to uh, create uh, live events in Microsoft Streams. For, that's for the in, uh, external in, encoder portions. So uh, one important note, so um, if you have Office 365 guests or, or federated users uh, or anonymous users, they can't be considered as part of the production team. Um, only, only users that are part of your tenant that are licensed within your tenant can be uh, part of the production team. So that being said, you know, who can consume the content? So you have you know, public anonymous users, um, everyone within your company, specific groups or people, uh, and then invited uh, invited people from a, from a different company. Um, however, federated users, uh, everyone in a federated company is not, you can't blanket cover that. You can have certain invitations for people. And then guest users within your tenant cannot consume with their guest account in your tenant. So they would have to consume it as a public user if you wanted them to join, uh, to join your session. Um, Next thing is the region availability. So right now, this the live events is only available in five, di uh, sorry, four different regions. So North America, Europe, Africa, Asia Pacific, and go local in Canada. So uh, it's also dependent on where the organizer um, is located, as well as where the Office 365 organization is located as well. So it's only available in those particular regions. So the exclusions right now are the go locals in the UK. Um, in India and other, um, other I guess, data centers that are currently uh, not supported. One thing that uh, is interesting too is, uh, so China is also not um, supported to be a event team member um, and, uh, and also sort of attendees. Uh, so China, in China, I guess Microsoft Teams is 
is physically blocked from their network. So the only workaround around that is to have a company VPN connection that allows those clients outside of their network to hop onto the uh, CDN network. So um, with that, I'll uh, pass it over to Michael. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the new Microsoft 365 roadmap, uh, stream live events is still listed as in development. Uh, it's it's supposed to be coming, you know, kind of GA around Q3 calendar year 2018. So we should be seeing it. Maybe it's been pushed back a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, once stream live events kind of goes GA, you have, you know, Microsoft Teams broadcast meetings, which is big live events. And then you have live events in Yammer. And both those are right now slated as Q2 calendar year 2019. So live events has been in preview for quite some time. Uh, it's been pretty solid in what I've been playing with. Uh, so it's interesting to see that it's going into 2019 before going GA. Uh, but like you know, the guys said that live events is really the evolution of Skype meeting broadcast. And so you get some of the cool added features by being able to access the stream backend services. So uh, things like the, the content delivery network that Dino was talking about, but also uh, leveraging like media production quality hardware and software encoders. And so this allows you to capture and mix the audio and video sources. Uh, using things like OB Studio, which is what I've used before, uh, AWS uh, Elemental uh, Live, FFmpeg, Halvision, Production Truck, uh, Switcher Studio, vMix, Wirecast, and XSplit. Uh, so those are the ones that Microsoft has documented the process to to connect those encoders into the the stream uh, live meeting or live event. Uh, but there's also manual configuration. So maybe if you don't have one of those uh, encoders, you can you know work with your vendor to to get that encoder to connect in. When you when you add an encoder into a live event, you disable all the uh, teams capability of doing the production uh, media production. So you can't you know adjust the video streams or the the desktop streams or the presenter. That's all done by the the encoder. Uh, so the Teams client just basically becomes uh, a viewing, or, or, or Teams becomes the the ability to view what the event looks like for the uh, external participants. Uh, but yeah, the all the encoder is now handed off, or all the processing is handed off to the encoders. Yeah, I mean that's interesting. Definitely, it's a definitely big upgrade from that perspective um, on the Skype broadcast. Uh, side of things where you didn't have that type of technology integration to provide that, you know, um, sort of like really professional production type um, recordings and presentations, right? Yeah, and you're seeing a lot of the features that are being announced on stream, leveraging AI for closed captioning, being able to do language switching and, uh, you know, speaker recognition and, and all that timeline stuff. So, uh, I can see why you know stream is still maybe not fully GA because they're just baking in so much functionality into the service. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really powerful. Like you're saying, Habib, number one, all this is in one integrated client, Teams, which is available on mobile, web browser, desktop, and then leveraging streams with the recording caption um, ability to to just distribute the uh, the video, the recording afterwards with with one lo one link essentially is awesome. It's really good. And I think organizations don't realize how much power they have hiding in there, right? Like when you schedule a Teams meeting, it's a single drop down to go from a, a meeting to a live event. And when it becomes a live event, and now you have all this power to do the the town halls and the broadcast uh, or your webinars and stuff that you might be paying as a, an organization or enterprise, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to do a session to all your employees when you got this all baked in the software you already have. Yeah, the town halls I think is really um, one of the bigger one of the bigger ones, right? The the use cases from it. As well as obviously the you know the, the, the web sessions and stuff like that. But from a from a company perspective, you know, the town hall is like the the easy use case, you know, uh, showing what the vision of the company is, whatever they're doing for their quarter kind of deal, right? So I really like that. And and as you guys mentioned too, I like those cool features that uh, be the ability to uh, do the live translation. 
um, you know, when the when the I guess the speaker is, is talking, you can translate directly into whatever your language is, so that uh, you can consume it uh, from that perspective. Awesome. So um, I guess we lost Dino halfway along the way, but uh, he got his uh, message through, so it's awesome. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks for joining in, everyone, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks. thanks.